think by limiting it to 30 minutes, that allows plenty of time that's respectful both to community members that might have taken time out of their busy schedules to come and speak to us or items that they have concerns about, but also board members that might have further commitments at the end of the meeting um, and need to, to hurry out. Uh, we do a, a usually a lot, plenty of time to get through the business of this board. Um, and I think the 30 minute restriction would meet your concern. Uh, well, well, the Board of County Commissioners, unlike this meeting, doesn't have a hard stop date. This meeting must adjourn at 3 o'clock because it's for you to be a room needs to be broken down and set back up for another meeting between 30. So I would think that to, I mean, if you're going to have, if you give 30, if you're limited to 30 minutes and there's 40 people that want to speak, then a few of them get to speak, then they sit through the business items, then the rest of them get to speak. Mm -hmm. I think these business items first are something that the public wants to say and talk about. I think that interest them that aren't business items, then they can be straight to the justice and come in at 2 o'clock. So we have a motion and a second. <coughs> Do we have a second? Second. 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 Opposed? Aye. Aye. So you're in need to read uh, that. Uh, my understanding of the split vote is that the status quo remains the same. So we still have an agenda that has a report on it that is not going to be given to us. Right. I will make a motion that we remove item number two from the presentation agenda and approve the rest of the agenda as presented. We have a motion and a second to make the amend the agenda and move the item number two during further discussion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? I, I, I find it <coughs> difficult uh, for this board to be taking a stance that needs to be restricted to public. I just want to get that on the record. I appreciate your interpretation of the actions. That is not my interpretation of the board's actions. What I see is not a limitation of public. Well, I, not having been given the opportunity to discuss this in open session before, this was our opportunity to do that, and I appreciate that. Yeah, that's fine. I just don't want you to speak for me. You can speak for yourself. Okay, at this time we have public input or comments for items that are on the agenda. Is there anybody who wishes to address the board? Again, my name is Mary Ann Burbanski. I'm a citizen of uh, Central Whitby. I'm going to read you Chapter 3 of the Open Public Meeting Act, Section 3.2. The legislature finds and yeah, I'm sorry. Order. This isn't on the agenda. Yes, it is. It's regarding open meetings. It, I don't see the discussion of the Open Public Meetings Act on the agenda. Uh, it's on, on agenda items. This is agenda, agenda, agenda meeting so regarding so. public meetings. Can I, I'm going to jump in for a no, second. No, the, the reason no, why no. we're doing this is to save the taxpayer money. Those no. two staffers no. are billing $80 right. an hour to listen to you blather and bash our troops. No. No. You've got to sit down. So, again, this is intended to avoid this very situation, and I apologize that I'm the chair, and my job is to, to control this meeting. So you can direct all your anger at me if you want to, but we ask that public comment related to items not on the agenda come later. You chose to disrespect the intention of the board by coming up here and talking about something else. So I'd ask that you please take your seat unless you have some comment to make on the items of action that the board is going to take. This is not meant as a disrespect. We are citizens of this county and you work for us. And that is exactly And you're what wasting this their is. money. So, so if you outburst again, you're gonna to have to go and ma'am, I'd ask you to sit down unless you have something to say that relates to the Probably. items. Thank you. You're welcome. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak to the items that the board is taking action on on the agenda? Are we going to do this all day or? I am here as a citizen. You work for us. This is about an open meeting. This has been the culture and tradition in our county. For point of order, please. This is a point of order, sir. Agenda. This is a point of order. 
I would still make a motion to close this the public about comment open period. Public the meeting that or not last week, public you public canceled public. the meeting. Second. We tried to come to yeah, a motion and a second to close the public comment period provided prior to board action. Is there any further discussion? I, I, and I, I, I just want to say, I have made time. I am very busy at work. I made time to come and speak here today. And I cannot stay. I cannot stay. In a second, is there any further board discussion? Yeah, I, 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 I think I think we antagonize a situation that doesn't mean that further escalation might be the next action. I just would urge this board to be uh, um, a force for for calm and uh, reason in a in a highly politically charged atmosphere. And I, I just it, I, I have a great deal of regret that this continues to escalate. Well, I would I would regret that every board of health meeting up so, so far this year has been hijacked by a certain public comment period by a certain action group, and I am growing weary of it. I would like to get the board of health business done and out of the way, and then the activist groups and the public can sit there and speak to their heart's content. In the meantime, the agenda with, with the motion made and a motion passed and the items on the agenda are clearly listed. There are only a couple of them. We're just going to move on. So we have a motion and a second on the floor right now to end public comment on items related to the agenda. Is there any discussion on that? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. I mean, I don't, I, my issue is I don't feel like this board was disrespectful. We made policy motions. We behaved appropriately. We communicated our intentions. The agenda was published before the meeting, and we're not the ones coming to the microphone speaking against what the board's actions were. And so we've allotted time for public comment in two places. One allows us to get the business done. One allows us to listen fully to what's being presented to us. So I don't, I don't interpret that as stifling public comment. What I have witnessed is individuals coming to the microphone in defiance of the board's request to do business first. And so I think that that, uh, that agitation is not coming from this board, but, but, from, uh, but from citizens who made it at their calling to be agitators. So we have a, a tie motion again. So My understanding would be that the public comment would be open for items that are on the agenda. On the agenda. Yes. So, the, so the agenda. I would ask Commissioner Price Johnson, since you're an advocate of keeping this public comment open, that you also can be, play a role in ensuring that the comment provided is in line with the, what the board has requested. So I, I think the board took action uh, against my other motion, and the board the board rules a, a board meeting. That's how. That's that's. Robert's rules, and so when um, I, I, I I'm not sure what you're asking me. I'm not when I do speak up, um, I, I I get chided for speaking out of turn as not the chair, and this has happened in the past. So I want to be respectful of the roles that we have here as board members and of the chair's role. And I understand it's difficult in in difficult meetings. Um, I do think that people should respect the actions of this board. The the board took action. We. Uh, and, and it is the uh, items for public comment at this time are restricted to those that are on the agenda. Um, now that I, apparently that's open to some interpretation. Uh, but if, you, if, if, it's, if, it's, if it's action items um, for items, is it for items on the what, what it says is items on the published agenda, and public comment is on the published agenda. If you, they are action items only, then, uh, which is how it, how it was restated, um, that, that makes it very different. So if it seems to me that people are wanting to comment on things that are on the published agenda, <laughs> they were reading this one thing so hard, it just seems uh, over the top for something that could have been managed. That states clearly right here. Comments, this is the published agenda. Mm -hmm. Comments regarding health related items not on the published agenda will be heard following the report right. on public health. But it's not action report. items. It's it's items on the public agenda. The argument that we heard from the citizens who stepped up is that the public comment is part of the published agenda. And they're gonna get their public comments very close to finish business. Well, so I, I guess the chair could ask one more time if there are any more comments. I mean I would suggest 
since the public comment is still open. Are there any items on the public's agenda and have two minute comments and move forward and then we can get through with our, we only have a couple of presentations so, uh, and a couple of contracts. Is there anybody who would like to address the board about items that are on the agenda for action? agenda is on the agenda that's what I'm speaking to this is about shoving people you don't want to hear from to the back of the room to the back of the bus it is about affording public participation Order. in this process it's not on the published agenda so I will come back at the end of this uh, meeting and make comments at, the, at the, uh, the time that you want me to and I would ask that you stick around and not slide out the door like you have in the past to avoid hearing that Thank you. I presume since you pointed at me for to a comment it's me and I've never stood up until I walked through the middle of the crowd. At this time Thank the you. public comment period is closed. Item number one is a
this ruling, but did not. And I, I really think that we need a resolution that's based on uh, the case law and based on the facts. And with that, I think I'm almost out of time, and I hope I was somewhat respectful. Thank you. Mary Ann Brabanski. Uh, 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 I'm a retired audiologist, and in the spirit of continued education today, um, I'd like to reiterate that loud noise does have an adverse effect on adults and especially on children. Most often the result of the noise exposure is not immediate, it is a cumulative effect. Um, here I pass on to uh, Keith Higman, uh, an assessment of aircraft noise conditions affecting student learning. And I emailed each of you a copy of that, the whole article before the last AMCO board meeting. I believe that this fairly recent research document will assist you in understanding how loud noise, no matter its source, affects student learning. This is an in-depth research report which will answer some of the questions that the commissioner uh, Jill Johnson posed during the last Board of Health meeting and may enlighten the Board to some of the major consequences that noise has on our children. For further understanding, there's a section, section two, chapter two, in that sixth uh, article, uh, and there are four and a half pages listing additional research articles at the end of this paper. There's some responsibility in regards to this rests on this board to educate itself. To ignore the facts is really not the answer. Just like we were learning all about bacterial in the water, it is responsibility of all of us to understand what effect noise has, especially on bubbles of children. The ultimate question that I have to this board, are you willing to sacrifice our children's ability to learn, which may affect their future due to this board's lack of will? At a minimum, we citizens have asked you repeatedly to post signs that it would inform parents, grandparents, and all members of their families that may protect children from this harm. Yet there's been one excuse after another as to why this is not going to happen. Public education has to start someplace, along with food for food. Thank you, Rick Abraham. Rick Abraham, Green Bank. Uh, earlier today, we met with uh, our, our county health uh, official, Mr. Brad Thomas and our Commissioner Helen Price Johnson to talk about those proposals that we gave this uh, board three months ago, which specific, specifically asked for the posting of warnings, specific proposals to let people know about the potential harms of being uh, exposed to noise. We also sh showed a brief clip of jets flying over Rhododendron Park uh, with decibel readings upwards of 100, 115. Uh, we've been taking those readings around this island, including in Oak Harbor, in neighborhoods, in parks, with toddlers playing under low-flying jets, where those noise levels hit as much as 134 decibels peak. That information is being gathered. There will probably be a documentary with other people taking uh, those readings, and you're going to be asked what you have d done about this problem. Uh, uh, Mrs. Levinsky, explained about the health harms associated with the noise levels that were on, on those uh, 
on those uh, video clips, <coughs> in that video clip. Three months later, after giving you those proposals, we've seen no action. Instead, we've seen crawfishing by the county health uh, official who took a, a one position is, and is now taking another. Basically, that uh, those uh, warning signs aren't needed or may not be needed. You know, maybe that decision is up in the air, but still no action is being taken. Meanwhile, those jets fly, they're flying over children, they're flying, emitting hazardous levels of noise, even recognized as such by the Navy. Uh, the county doesn't even have a, a, a sound meter that works to be taking readings. Clearly, noise, hazardous noise, has not been on the county health board's agenda. It needs to be. This needs to be taken seriously. We are not going to wait. Noise victims are not going to be quiet. They're not going to give up their right to speak out. And, and you're going to have to deal with this. And if you don't deal with it, someone else will deal with it in your place. It's not going to go away. The right thing to do is address this problem. It's the, it's the moral thing to do. People are being hurt. You can't keep ignoring it. Thank you. My name is Kate Andrews. When I first moved here in 2012, I signed a disclosure statement, a real estate disclosure statement, and I happened to be a, a real estate broker in three states. So I understand the um, magnitude, the importance of a real estate disclosure statement, so that when you move into a house, you know what you're going to be getting yourself into. That real estate disclosure statement regarding noise says that there was a small local airport near my home. It said nothing about an outline field. It said nothing about touching no landing. And it said nothing about decibel level. I went a month later. I realized how serious this was. People have been put in jail. Brokerages have gone out of business. Money is lost through the lawsuits. And I went and I found the top broker in Coopville. And I met, met, met with her. And I told her that this was a class action lawsuit waiting to happen. That she needed to go to her broker and she needed to say that they were telling lies. They were lying to the people who were buying homes here. The people were buying homes here under false pretenses. I spent four years trying to tell the truth to all of you. It took four years in Flint, Michigan. Five years ago, mothers and fathers who were trying to protect their children went to county commissioners and said, there's something wrong here. My children, my child is sick. There's something wrong with the water. You need to test the water. Years went by, and they tested the water and found no significant impact. Later, when the press got involved and more people got involved, just like this court, we're now thousands of people in 10 counties. 10 counties are involved in this growler issue. More people are getting involved. We are getting press out of California. We have screenwriters, and we have documentary who are, have come here and talked to us from Manhattan and California who are going to do something about this. They're going to cover it. And you know, I know what happened in Flint, Michigan, guys. A lot of people got fired for their lack of disclosure. A lot of people lost their jobs for not telling the truth and protecting their citizenry. And just like I told that realtor back in 2012, I'm telling you guys right now, it's happening here. and having to wait till I get done here. I want to thank the commissioners who supported an open meeting and democracy. Uh, thank you. I uh, appreciate that and applaud that. Uh, it's hard to do that these days in this uh, atmosphere of uh, polarization. Um, Mr. Hickman uh, referred to the fact that there was a public uh, request for that water quality analysis. There's been a public request for some noise analysis, some uh, addressing of this issue for the last three and a half to four years. Um, I want to just pull out again those uh, six items that we suggested to the Board of Health to contemplate and to the Coopville uh, Health Officer to consider. These were suggestions which we feel like are good suggestions to begin a place of uh, giving uh, this issue what it needs and um, 
as we noted in the very excellent presentation on water, I'm much more knowledgeable now about that. Um, thank you uh, about that. But we know that science has created standards for air. It's created standards for water quality. We heard all about that. And it's created standards for noise. We are over those standards, just like we were over those standards for water quality. So uh, if we follow science along the same path that the water quality analysis did, um, we uh, look for source identification. Well, it's pretty clear what that source identification is. We all know what it is. It's the growler and the different kind of noise that that growler puts out uh, to all those uh, that are underneath it, especially at low-level flights, the FCLPs. So uh, in the water analysis presentation, part of the science and how they proceeded down that path, um, they did public education, which we suggested is a good place to go. And let's educate the kids in the schools. Let's have another item was there was a public forum. You know, we've offered to have a workshop with you. Um, but we could have a public meeting about noise. We got this input for the uh, planning documents for the county. Noise was number five. You know, people are responding. Noise is a problem for people in this county, not just the five or six people who are here speaking in a microphone to you. Um, and there was no, then there was monitoring. You are doing monitoring for water quality. Well, there could be monitoring for noise as well. The San Juans, the commissioners there have supported a noise monitoring, and they have asked if we wanted to be a part of that. We could be a part of that noise monitoring system. So there are many things that we could be doing to prevent, not prevent, but to uh, give people the option. You have three minutes now. Okay, to give people the option of getting away from this noise. So again, thank you, and we look forward to hopefully seeing some response and working with you on some efforts to let people know this harm that is happening. Joe Stella. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is uh, Joe Stella. I now live in uh, Langley, Washington. <clears throat> um, I'm, um, I think I've heard most of the things that uh, I uh, wanted to uh, visit with you folks about. Uh, again, my biggest concern is our children and what this noise possibly could be doing to our children. Uh, I think the one of the speakers mentioned uh, Flint, Michigan. I think that would be a good parallel to what we're experiencing here in our community today. These jets fly over our schools, our hospitals, our playgrounds. They do it on somewhat a regular basis. If in fact, this noise possibly could be damaging them, for the long term, we should know that. The county should be putting forth whatever studies they need to determine that. And if that's the case, do something about it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Stella. Is there anybody else for public comment? You? Going once, going twice.
from a community noise perspective, the person on the ground is less concerned with the configuration of an aircraft, the noise it makes, and the perceived noise it produces. In other words, what they call the EPNL, or effective perceived noise level. We were made, mentions made of children in the school, and children having, and not just the students, but actually classmates having to be stopped. Um, it affects their learning levels. By understanding, Tufield School District has one of the highest academic records in the nation. I've talked to teachers from the Tufield School District. I've got a uh, brother-in-law who's taught at the elementary school, the high school, and in the middle school. He's never had to stop a class or interrupt a class due to jet noise. The other thing is uh, that you talk about one company that you're worried about noise, you're worried about noise, you're not worried about noise. Jet noise is regulated by the Federal Aviation Administrator. The United States Naval Airspace above this island is regulated by the Federal Aviation Administration. It has nothing whatsoever to do with the Board of Health because we have no jurisdiction over the Navy nor its airspace. If you have complaints about noise, please call the Federal Aviation Administration at 202-267-3521. If you have complaints about fuel odors or exhaust emissions, please call the Federal Aviation Administration at 425-227-2000. Or you can call the base directly at 360-257-6665 or they're open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and they will give you the numbers to the Federal <laughs> Secondly, they don't use afterburner 
in training evolution was all I got to go. Uh,
choose not to accept it. So for us to say, well, we'll accept your information but deny other information, it, it's the same resistance both ways. They be given answers, they don't like the answers. So with that, I can see. Uh, with that, I would just propose a motion that says that the information presented to the Board of Health is not sufficient for this board to take action, that no public health issue has been demonstrated, and there's no need for us to follow up on any of the requests that have been made. Well, you have to second. So we have a motion and a second on the floor that the Board of Health needs to not take any further action because there's been no public health demonstration uh, that has been made and that no further action by this board is needed. Any further discussion? Well, I, I think as there was, I, I, well, I, I, I think so. what this is moving is exactly the opposite com direction than what I had hoped to try to have a reasoned conversation about the fact. Um, I think that that we we all understand that the reason that the planes fly at the low level and that the emitting the frequency that they do is because they're military aircraft. What's clear in the report that we received is that commercial aircraft are held to a different standard and that's why around commercial airports there's mitigation that's put into place. Commercial aircraft have systematically been made less noisy over time where military aircraft are actually getting noisier. This is an issue that needs to be addressed at the congressional level as far as the, where, which planes are being built. It needs to be addressed through the EIS with the Navy and what impacts there are. But to say that there's no impact to our local community, it, I, I, I'm sorry, I cannot support that. I, 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 don't, I don't think that that's what it was stated. It was stated that there's been no adverse impact shown to be happening in the community. And you just stated it needs to be addressed at the congressional level because they're the one that funds the aircraft. At the local level of this Board of Health, there's nothing we can do about it, so I don't think we need to stress it any further. I don't see the need to come in here month after month and re-address this same issue month after month after month. This is the fifth time this year we've addressed this same group of people over the same issue, okay? So all we're doing is wasting taxpayer time and money, and quite frequently, that's why I wanted the comment period at the end, so that finally, Mr. Hickman and his department could put on a presentation. So, there's a motion and a second on the table. I, I'm sure it's going to fail for the majority. Everybody can vote how they want to vote on whether or not we're going to uh, declare a public health crisis based on the Navy and the committee or not. I, I would say that that is not your motion. That's what, I mean, what we, you, you didn't we want to use the word that you're not. Because you did not say action because you didn't vote. You can vote it up or down. So, your vote is your vote. You stand by your vote. You can vote it up or down. Uh, so there's a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor, say aye. Uh, the motion was that there has been no demonstrable public health crisis right. and there is no need for the board to take action. Right. There is no motion. I mean, I just want to, I want to hear, if you want to change your motion, you can change your motion. Can you reread the motion? Let's clarify what was moved and what was said. So the intent, uh, uh, we will repeal my motion, rescind my motion, so that we have a clear one on the board. The motion is that based on the information presented to the Board of Health, that there is no clear public health crisis and that there is no need for further action by this body in response to the request made by court. So second. So we have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? So I, I believe that there, um, uh, whether there's a public health crisis or not is not, is not in my purview to, to claim. What I do think is further discussion is needed, further information is needed to, to find out what is and what is not. So you have a two-part motion there. I, it, whether, whether it's a crisis or not is, uh, is certainly what we're hearing from members who are most impacted by it. What we don't understand is how the rest of the county is impacted. We don't, I don't have a clear understanding of what's happening in the Oak Harbor area with the, with the flights that are going over people's houses. I do know that in Lopez Island that there's a, 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 a lot of disturbance economically 
and that there's some anecdotal information, as with here, about the, the fact that people's uh, health has been impacted. But we don't have, as a board of health, to make a, a motion about a crisis is is, a, is not where I'm, I'm willing to go. What I do think is that uh, some reason conversation and some more data is worth our pursuing. So I'm going to vote against it, but I want to be clear about what my vote means. I was going to say, the word crisis wasn't in there. It was based on information presented to the Board of Health. Well, we can't vote on this. This is crisis. the motion that was it voted. It passed not with crisis. Well, you, but you seconded it. You she just read. Re <laughs> the community knows what this means. That. That's all I'm going to say. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? No. At this point, is there any further discussion or shall we adjourn the meeting? Well, we have a meeting that needs to adjourn at 3 o'clock. So, we'll uh, adjourn. I move to adjourn.